When you hear the words Elg Eater, you probably think about plecos. But there are so many more varieties of Elg Eater than you think. And not a lot of people know that the different algae eaters also, di also specialize in different algae species. So here are the top 5 best algae eaters that aren't plecos and what algae they feast best on. My name is Jennifer and you're watching Fishy Pet Keeping. Stay tuned! Number 5. Rosy Barbs. Wait, what? Not a suckerfish? Nope, the rosy barb is a colorful, like reddish, pinkish fish, medium size, around six inches, that really like to feast on hair algae. It tastes like spaghetti to them, and spaghetti is delicious. Now, because they are a medium sized fish, they also require a little bit bigger of an aquarium, at least. 29 gallons I, I would say in that tank or even bigger they will thrive they will love it when they have tons of hiding spots and also a lot of plants a word of caution though from what I've really searched the rosa barbs can like can like to nibble on fine leaves or well, yeah very fine or very soft leaves so preferably keep them with the uh, like harder leaves like for example anubias I would guess floaters work too I would guess that java fern works and I know that java mox also works and that also offers some shading and also some hiding spots for that too just keep in mind that java moss has a, has a tendency to kind of grow out of control at least in my experience so just make sure to trim that java moss down regularly. They like to be in groups, so preferably get at least four or five of them and they will thrive. They also tolerate a wide range of pH and water hardness and a wide range of parameters, so to say. They're a very hardy fish, and so that makes it a really good beginner fish. Number four, mollies. Yes, another fish that's not a sucker fish. This is a live bearer, a very beautiful and very cute live bearer that, and live bearer, if you don't know, also means that, well, they give live birth. They don't lay eggs like most other fish do. They, they give birth to live babies, just like guppies do or platys do. But if you didn't know that, now you know. And just as the rosy barbs, these also love hair algae. And this also applies to other live bearers too. They love hair algae and, you know, just algae that... String algae, hair algae, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And also, as the other live bearers, they will breed non-stop if, if you give them the opportunity. Opportunity. Opportunity is the word. So if you don't want babies everywhere, then get either only males or on, only females. And there's a really easy way to determine if it's a male or female. This also applies to other libraries too, to see the difference. The male has kind of a, what do you say, like a spear backwards. And the, and the female has a fin that is more like rounded. So if, so if your fish doesn't have that spear that's, point, that's pointing backwards, then it's a female. However, if you do want some babies, then get a slightly bigger tent just to, you know, dilute that waste and such, because they, they will create more waste if they breed, you know. More babies, more food, more waste, etc. You get it. If you want babies in your tank, then, uh, then I would recommend like a trio at least, which means one male and two females at that or more preferably because if you get only one male and one female then then that can potentially stress the female out and it can ultimately lead to the female's death because she gets too stressed and so these fish preferably require at least a 10 gallon tank you can get away with a five gallon but i i personally wouldn't get wouldn't wouldn't put them in less than a 10 gallon they also prefer harder water with a higher ph2 which harder water usually means higher ph2 so you probably don't have to worry about you know measuring both of them at the same time if 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 you know you don't have to but if you have super soft water like i do and you still really want mollies then there are ways to harden the water and raise the ph luckily some ways are chemicals 
or powders, which are in form of minerals that you add to the water each time after water change, for example. And there are also crushed coral, which is a very popular method. I have never used it, um, but I know that a lot of people do. And that's kind of the long-term solution for hard water. It doesn't raise the pH or harden water forever, but for a very long time. So you don't have to add anything to the, to the tank every time you do a water change. You can get them in a ton of different varieties and colors. So some varieties include the liar tail, the Dalmatian, the Balloon Molly, my personal favorite is the Liar Tail, which, is, which has a little bit more, what do you say, natural look to the fish. There's also the Sailfin Molly, which I really like too. So just pick and choose, I guess. Number three, a mono shrimp. Yes, I'm aware, shrimp are invertebrates, not fish. I know, but hey. Let's just ruin this list, okay? With the shrimp. Amano shrimp are some of the most amazing algae eaters out there. They scrape everything off the plate, almost everything, off, for example, hardscape. They can reach places where maybe you can't clean, and so they will do that work for you. They are very hard workers, and they, they just... It feels like they do this all day. They just do it with their tiny little claws, just eating algae off of hardscape, off of the ground and such. They won't really take the algae off of the glass. I guess that's because they can't really get a grip on the glass, I, I think. But if you do have problems with algae on the rocks, on driftwood, on the bottom of the tank, then a mono shrimp or cherry shrimp are perfect for this. Now, Keep in mind, a mono shrimp and a cherry shrimp aren't the same thing, they are different species. I just gave an example. They are perfect for small nanotanks and they are very popular among aquascapers because, well, they eat the algae off of the tank and they are very, very cute, very beautiful. Some people think they're kinda ugly just because, well, they're often very grayish, but I, th I think they're really cute. And if you want a controlled population, then I can assure you that these guys, they will, ca they will carry eggs, but uh, they, they most likely won't hatch. Why? Because the eggs hatch in brackish water. They won't hatch in fresh water. So that's a plus if you don't want an unlimited amount of shrimp. Another reason why they're popular among aquascapers is that they won't touch live plants. They will touch it, but just because they want the algae off of it. And so that benefits the plant because they get more light, etc. And it just looks better, you know. They are very hard workers. They just deserve to be loved. And yeah, they just deserve to be loved. That's it. Number two, Autosynclus. Now this fish is like the exterminator of algae, of especially brown algae, off your glass, off your plants, off your hardscape, you name it. Some even grow algae for them in different, in different tanks. They will grow algae and then put the algae down for them in their tank and they love algae. They are hard workers. These are tiny schooling nanofish that needs to be in a group of at least Four. And they will probably, when you first get them, they will probably get to work immediately. If you have a contaminated, or contaminated tank full of algae, then it will probably take at most a few days before the tank is crystal clear. These fish are also very hardy. They tolerate a wide variety of water parameters and they are, yeah, just hardy and they are a very good beginner fish in my own experience. Some find them very sensitive but I haven't had a problem with them. I have very soft water but if you do have like very hard water or parameters that differs a lot or just shifts in just fluctuates that's the word. If you have like parameters that fluctuates a lot then I guess that could be a contributor to sensitivity to them, for them. I believe that genetics also play a big part. But if you keep having bad luck with them, then try another fish. But I personally have never had a problem with them. Just, you know, do, do your research before getting them. Do your research before getting any fish, or any pet for that matter. And once your tank is crystal clear, no signs of brown algae or such, remember to feed them afterwards. Because I, I've heard that that's a very, 
common mistake to do, forgetting to feed them specifically afterwards. When I worked at a pet store, sometimes customer a customer would come in and, uh, and say that their autosynclus have keep dying one after another. And so I ask them, how often do you feed them? And they're like, I don't feed them. I just sprinkle flakes for my other fish. And so these flakes don't really reach the bottom. And so that's the answer. Remember when the tank doesn't have any sort of algae, remember to feed them algae wafers. Small al algae wa wafers, maybe one, once a day or so. And when you see that the algae is kind of taking over again, skip a day or two and uh, just let them do their thing. This is also fish unpopular among aquascapers just because they, they are such good workers with just keeping the tank clean off of algae. And just because they keep the glass clean or and hardscape and such, doesn't mean you don't have to do water changes. Remember to do your water changes. Number one is the Siamese algae eater. Not to be mistaken with the Chinese algae eater. The Chinese algae eater will, will just, when they, when they grow, they will most probably exterminate everything in your tank if you don't have any hardy or big, bigger fish that can tolerate that. Don't keep them with small fish, they, they will most probably die. But the Siamese alligator is a peaceful fish that likes to be in groups, but they can survive or survive. They can be happy alone too. They don't have to be in a school, but they do appreciate some friends too. This fish loves hair algae and also black beard algae. I know that hair algae and black beard algae is a very, very common algae in most tanks. Algae is inevitable, you will get it. Siamese algae eaters can help you a lot with keeping that algae off, off the glass or hardscape. I have three of them, they do a really good job at, at eating this. I haven't seen a sign of hair algae or blackbeard algae the whole time I had this, one, this 150 up. I really like the look of this fish. I love that black stripe along their bodies. They are medium-sized fish and they're just fast, fast, they're active. And when they're resting, they look so cute because they just rest on the ground or on a or on hardscape. They look like little cats. No, 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 no. They look like little ducks moving around like vacuum cleaners. <laughs> That's the best description I could think of. And because they are medium sized and they love, they can just bolt real fast and they are fast. And they do like to move around a lot. They love to swim around a lot. So I wouldn't put the, put these guys in less than a 40 gallon breeder. Why do they call it a 40 breeder? Is that the common tank to breed fish? I don't know. If you know, leave a comment down below. And the good thing is they will leave most plants, uh, most plants alone. I haven't had any problems with them. I have heard that they love, that they like, can damage some finer leaves on some plants and such. So, but most plants are just fine with them. They will grow to around six inches, which I consider a medium sized fish. And so if you don't have any algae in your tank, then uh, remember to supplement with some algae wafers too. These fish, they tolerate a wide variety or a wide range of parameters. They're just, they're hardy fish, like most other fish on this list. They're hardy, they are a great beginner fish if you have the right size of the tank. So that's the Siamese algae eater. So those were the top five algae eaters that aren't plecos. If you like this video and found this video useful, then don't forget to give it a like. And also, if you want to see more educational videos like this, also setups, vlogs and such, mostly top 5 videos and some reptile videos too, then uh, consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell button too, so you don't miss a single update. And it helps to keep the channel going. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!